Good morning. I want you to ponder two things that I think will be kind of a, a, a way to explain what Jesus is trying to say in the Gospels today. Okay? One of them is, um, I remember when I was teaching 6th, 7th, and 8th grade in the inner city. We had some kids that had problems. So what we used to do is take the 8th grade class and some of the problem kids to a correction facility out in Staten Island. I think it was called Wall Kill or whatever. But anyway, they had a, um, a program that they started that came out quite a few years ago, I don't even know if it exists anymore, called Scared Straight. They would bring kids to a prison, okay, and the prisoners would come out and talk to them and then really get on them and tell them what, what it's like to be in prison. And it really scared them. I mean, they didn't pull any punches, they cursed, they did everything. And the whole idea was not to scare the kids or make them go home frightened. They were trying to warn them, you know, you're on the wrong path. What you're doing now is bad. Don't do that. Because if you do it, you're going to wind up here, and you don't want to be here. And it worked. It worked beautifully. But the whole idea was, again, to make them aware of the lifestyle that they were starting at such a young age. And they didn't want them to do that. And they were really trying to help them. The other things were relationships. Between a man and a woman, a husband and wife, a family, uh, parents and children, uh, relationships at your workplace, relationships especially in your church the community of believers, and Jesus is kind of pointing at that today, okay? And Jesus is trying to talk about a point. When people sin against you or do something against you, they hurt you, they say something that's hurtful, they spread a rumor, just anything, whatever it may be. He says, be careful. You should approach them right away and nip that in the bud right away because that could go on to something really bad. And he gives three ways to do it. He says, first of all, when something happens, go talk to this person and say, listen, what you did was wrong. That was really bad. You shouldn't have done that. And let them know how you feel in words. And you start off just between you two. No one else. Hopefully, if you could get him or her to admit it, you'll squash the whole thing, you'll be friends again, and you'll unite again. No more problem. If that doesn't work, Jesus says, well, then bring other people in, two or three people that you know and that person know, and maybe kind of like a, an intercessory group, you know, an intercession group, where we can talk about it and maybe get it taken care of. And he says, if that doesn't work, the last thing you could do is actually bring him to the church. Bring him to the church community, bring him to the priest, the counselors, maybe we could get this done. All with the idea not to hurt anybody, not to condemn anybody, not to make them feel like it's their fault, even if it is. The idea is to get this out in the open and say, listen, what you did was wrong and it's not good. Let's fix that and heal the wound that we have between each other. That's the whole idea. And Jesus says, if that don't work, then treat them like they're Gentiles or they're publicans. And what he was trying to say, because Jesus did go to the Gentiles and the publicans. We know that, that St. Paul did that. They're not part of the community. They're not part of the family. So treat them as if they're not part of it. If they change, then bring them back. Because one of the worst things that could happen between a relationship, between a family, between a friendship, is disorder and disunity. It causes a great fracture in that relationship, and it could cause a deep trouble, okay? And Jesus says you have to attack that right away. You have to say something right away. And what does that mean for us? What is he trying to tell us? Go out and do that. Now, that's not an easy thing to do, okay? He says try to talk to them. Most people may not take that. A lot of people don't like to hear that they're wrong, you know, that they made a mistake or they did something wrong. They won't admit to it, okay? It's not an easy thing to do. Now, if you're going to take them to a group of other people and then take them to a church with more of a bigger group, most likely it's not going to work well. But we still have an obligation to do that. He wants us to talk to people. You know, it's, it's an important thing. There's something called the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. Spiritual works of mercy, one of the things is to inform your brother, to educate them to their ignorance. In other words, we're not saying that they're stupid, but saying but what you're doing is wrong. Because if we don't do that, we're allowing them and enabling them to keep doing what they're doing. You know, we're so worried about being politically correct. We're so worried about not hurting somebody's feeling. We're so worried about how we're going to look or they're not going to like us. We're not going to be popular. It's become dangerous. And Jesus says, that's, that's not good. We can't tolerate disunity, especially in the community, especially in the church. We can't do that because it's causing scandal. And we see all the problems it's causing on many different levels now. He says, you can't do that. You have to say something. But always in a loving manner. It's kind of like 
When people hear about the term excommunication, it sounds very, and it is, you don't want to be excommunicated by your church. You're actually being thrown out of the family. Not because they want to, but because of what you did. You really threw yourself out of it. They make it official when they throw you out. But it's always done with the stipulation, we're always here. You can always come back. The church does never throw somebody out and never take them back unless they don't want to come back. You know, it's always there. We gotta remember, we're not trying to show the person to hurt them. It's an admonition to try to make them wake up and let them know that what you're doing is wrong, okay? And if that doesn't work, then Jesus says, you've done what you can do, okay? That's our obligation. That's our obligation as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, that's our obligation as part of the family. We're telling you that something's wrong, and we're trying to help you out of it. That means I love you, not hate you. Now, personally, I tried that quite a few times. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes the people got really annoyed and then came back later, and sometimes I lost them. You know, again, there was a, a song by Simon and Garfunkel, the, the uh, boxer, and there's one phrase in there which is excellent. A man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rap. A lot of people don't like to hear that they're wrong. But a lot of times we have a false sense of mercy a full sense of kindness and nightness. If I think we're doing something by not hurting, being gentle, don't tell them that. No, that's wrong. You're enabling them to do that. You're not helping them to correct themselves and make it better. That's not good. That's not real love. Real love is not telling you all the time how wonderful you are and I agree with everything you say and do. That's not good. I would want somebody to tell me if I'm doing something wrong. If I'm doing something wrong, I want to correct it. And that's what we're supposed to do. But Jesus is trying to get something very important. When it comes to the church, unity is the greatest thing that we have to hold on to. The Trinity is unity, the family of us. We're not just, we really technically don't belong to this church or that church. We belong to this parish or that parish. We belong to the universal church throughout the world. Our brothers and sisters are spread out all through the world. And when God invites us to Mass, He's inviting us out of the world as a family. He doesn't want disruption. You know, He tells people, you got to be careful of that. You know, in a family, if there's a problem, if you don't take care of it, then there's disruption in your family. You know, you're never going to have unity, and you're going to have a problem. You know, she's saying it's very important for us to do that, but again, always with love. If you remember one of the most beautiful scriptures we had was the prodigal son, okay? And I think most people remember that, know that. Really, it's about the father, not really about the son. The son left his father, and he embarrassed him, and he went out and lived a terrible life, and everybody in the neighborhood knew it. It was an embarrassing thing. But when he came back, his father saw him coming. He ran towards him with open arms to grab him. And that's the way Jesus wants us to be. Okay? He doesn't want us to be pushing people out and not loving them anymore. You've got to give people a chance. If you look at the Vatican, have you ever seen pictures of the Vatican? I'm sure you have. And you see the big building in the Basilica. And then it has the two big buildings coming around, a big row of buildings coming around this way. And then you have the courtyard. If you notice, the arms that are coming out from the church are around like this. As if to say Holy Mother Church has her arms open all the time. Always ready to take you. Always. Always. Now we gotta deal with reality. And I like dealing with reality. Okay? Um, in the world we're living in, what's going on? This is probably not gonna work. There's gonna be times where no matter what you say or do, they don't want to listen. People don't want to be helped sometimes, even if they need it. And even if they subconsciously want it, their pride will stop them from doing it. And you have to have the grace enough, okay, and, 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 the, and the, the grace from God to look and say, you know what, I'm going to let this go. Sometimes we have to love people, forgive people, have mercy on people, help them, whatever, from a distance. They don't want me to do it. They don't want you to do it. But that doesn't mean you give up. So if I see, no matter what I do, this person's not responding and they're not interested, I let it go. And I always tell them, whenever you're ready, you want to talk, I'm here. And I put them in a special part of my heart and soul. I leave the door open because even 10 years they could come back. And then I let it go. Because we have to deal with it. We can't force people to do what they want. If you don't want help, there's nothing I could say. And I've seen many people, I've known many people, drug addicts, People that are alcoholics go down the tubes because they didn't want help. I don't want it. 
So Jesus is saying, all you have to do is try. Do it in a loving manner. Always be open. But tell people, we're too quiet today. The old adage, silence is golden, is finished. In the days we're in now, we have to speak out and speak up. We're children of God, we're supposed to go out and say, by what we say and do, we have to let people know when things are wrong. We can't just sit back on it. He wants us to do that. And he wants to do it with love. And if we've done that, then we've done everything we could. And that's all we can do. God bless you.